I'm Matthew Weinstock with a look at the July issue of Hospitals and Health Networks. The cover story is our report on the 2013 Most Wired survey. This year, more than a third of the hospital field took the survey, and more than 250 hospitals and health systems received Most Wired designation. This is actually the 15th year that we've conducted the Most Wired survey and benchmarking study. I'm joined today by my colleague, Susanna Hopsallern, to talk a little bit about the survey and what we've seen over these past 15 years. Susanna, thanks for being with me. Thank you, Matthew. So as I said, Susanna, this is 15 years of Most Wired. We've seen a lot of progress in some of the building blocks for Most Wired, meaningful use, clinical information systems. Uh, what would you say over those 15 years have been some of the highlights? What really stands out to you? Matthew, when I look at the Most Wired Benchmark Group, there are some distinguishing characteristics. This group has a formalized structure for IT governance. They are fanatics about IT strategy and measurement. They are constantly looking at what's the baseline measurement, and once a project is underway, they set specific timelines to make sure that the project is on track and it's delivering the value that they had originally said it would. Uh, it's not surprising that out of this group, we have 10 organizations uh, that have received the Malcolm Baldrige Award. Another area where this group excels is IT infrastructure. We have a requirement for the most wired designation that if your system goes down and your clinical systems are wiped out, that within 72 hours you can restore that IT system and produce patient information. This group, 84% can do it within 24 hours, which is really amazing. And that really helps with uh, disaster in disasters. One of the other areas, if you look at, besides the huge gains we've seen in patient safety, where right now we're looking at over two thirds have physicians entering uh, medication orders. Also, when you look at the um, Decision support, they were early adopters even before the meaningful use criteria. But we have some added benefits here with quality reporting, where a lot of them are actually monitoring the quality metrics set forth by CMS. For example, if you have a heart attack patient, they are monitoring that during the hospital stay and sending alerts to the clinical staff to make sure that everything that needs to be done for that patient is done in a timely fashion. So Susanna, you referenced some of those meaningful use criteria and, we, and we've seen some improvement in some of the building blocks, order entry, for instance. Where do you think that the most wired and even all respondents have some room to grow? Where are some of the challenges going forward? Probably the biggest challenge that everybody faces is connectivity across the continuum. Uh, this is going to continue to be a stumbling block and something that needs to be overcome for the future. And looking at the 2013 data, was there anything that stood out, out at you? Were there any big aha moments? Well, we were surprised that we actually have some very good metrics going on uh, in the clinical area. When you look at, you know, how's a hospital department functioning? We have good metrics. How are we functioning across departments? That's also pretty good, and especially in the most wired group. But when you look at kind of looking at those bigger pictures, the big data, uh, the business scenarios and what might you be looking at as the delivery system is changing, that really drops down and we're looking at less than a third of the organizations have some sophistication there. And as we've talked and written about in the past about how IT really needs to be a part of the overall strategic plan of an organization, what are you seeing in the most wired in that regard, especially as they move forward with accountable care or new payment models? Over 60% have some data on the continuum. But when you start to actually look at 
uh, the, the payment structure and how payment and quality metrics are across the continuum. That's where it falls apart. And that's going to be very important as we're sharing risk with other providers. So a very small percentage have really made inroads there. Uh, same thing when we look at population health and are you, do you have that data? Now, you might have that data from your own clinical and financial systems, and most of them do. But when we look at population health data across the settings from an HIE, it's a very tiny percentage there. Uh, probably the biggest challenge I see for the group as a whole is uh, patient engagement. Uh, we still have a relatively small percentage that can actually accept patient-generated data going into a patient portal. So that's a new capability. If you're going to involve the patients, they need to have access to that portal and also input some of their own data. Uh, when we get into the social media is starting to take off, but Besides crisis communications, when you look at care management messages, that's still in the early stages. And if you look at going into the home with telemedicine, that, that's just really pioneering work. So I think that a lot's going to be done in that area on working with the patients in the future. And we look forward to the leadership of the Most Wired Group in this area. Well, thank you, Susanna, for sharing some of that data with us. Thank you, Matthew. Also in the July issue, our Generations in the Workforce series takes a look at how hospitals are recruiting younger board members to lead their organizations. And our Clinical Management series takes a look at safety protocols that are now being implemented in the OB area, including reducing early elective deliveries. For those stories and more, be sure to check out the July issue of HNHN. I'm Matthew Weinstock. Thanks for tuning in.